Hey everybody, welcome to Pollinator Palooza Week. My name is Aaron, I am a nature educator at Jackson Bottom Wetlands, and there I teach kids and adults alike all about pollinators. Now, one of the most important pollinators in the Pacific Northwest are mason bees. Now, mason bees are a darker green colored solitary bee that you can find flying around your backyard. Now, these bees pollinate 95% better than honeybees do, and that's because they transfer pollen on their chest and not their legs. So, mason bees actually don't make honey, so most of the pollen that they gather actually gets transferred from flower to flower. So they're extremely important for flowers and fruit trees around the Pacific Northwest. Now, today, I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to build a mason bee house. Now, building a home is a great way to introduce mason bees to your yard. Now, you may think, why would I want bees in my yard? Well, A, they pollinate a lot of your plants and flowers, keeping them healthy and providing fruits and a new generation for the next coming years. And B, mason bees don't have stingers. So they're actually a very gentle and docile bee that's perfect around kids or animals. So a mason bee house can be made out of actually a lot of different things. Now, I actually don't have the specific tools to build a correct mason bee house, but there are a lot of different ways you can build one that'll work. So right now, I'm gonna use what tools I have out of my workspace, my car here, and we're gonna build a wooden mason bee house. Now, if you don't have tools like clamps or a drill or a saw or drill bits, then later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how to make a mason bee house out of recycled items you can find within your house. So right here in front of me are all the tools that you're gonna to need to build a wooden mason bee house. Now, first off, you're gonna want a drill or some kind of screwdriver to have screws or even a nail and hammer will work as well. Then you're gonna want a tape measure to measure and make sure that your lengths are proper. You're gonna want a pen or a pencil to mark your measurements so you can cut directly. And you wanna make sure you have a nice sharp saw, drill bits and screws or nails and a hammer like I mentioned clamps to hold your project down so it's not moving all over the place and of course safety glasses and gloves to protect yourself so mason bees actually nest in a lot of different things I've seen mason bees nest in a wooden home built by a bee expert I've also seen mason bees nest in windowsills and little screw holes. So they like tighter, smaller holes that extend at least a few inches because what they do is they burrow inside there and they lay their eggs and they cover them with pollen so they have a food source for when they hatch and then they build a mud wall in front of it to help protect it. Now that is why they're called mason bees. So you wanna have a large enough hole for them to fit in, but it also needs to be a large enough depth so that they can lay at least an egg or more. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make our box and we're then gonna measure inside for our shelves. Now your box can be any size. The correct size, I can put a link on for you if you wanna build the real Mason B box but I'm just gonna use materials that I have here. Now I have four pieces of wood that are about one foot, two inches long. So like I said, it can be any size and it really depends on how many shelves you're gonna put inside the box because you wanna make sure that there's space between for air to flow and the bees to fly in and out. Now I'm going to make the box and to do that, I'm gonna take two pieces of wood and I'm going to drill two holes on either side here, okay? And that's gonna allow me to screw in all four corners of the box here.
So now that the box is built, I'm gonna measure on the inside here and measure for how many shelves I wanna get. I'm thinking I'm probably only gonna do maybe two, maybe three shelves. So we'll see here. So we'll measure inside and we're gonna see how tall we are. So we're still at about one foot two inches here. Now width is really important as well and we are at about one foot one inch here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in little um, ledges for the shelves so that way you can take the shelves in and out and actually clean the mason bee houses when they're done nesting for the next year. So I actually only got one shelf in here, just due to time constraints. But you are more than welcome to add more shelves. And if you want, you can even put B boxes down here in the bottom shelf as well. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add a back, because it needs some protection against the weather here. All right, so I have three boards that are measured to fit in the back side, and I'm just going to stack them and drill them in. So first, let's screw some drill holes. Then once you have your holes drilled, you can take your shelf out real quick and you're gonna set them on the ground first and drill them up as you go. So now that we have our back on, we wanna make sure that the bees are protected from the elements as much as possible. So we're gonna add a roof. So I have three longer pieces here left over that I'm gonna to cut to size and I'm gonna overhang like this. Now, when you're overhanging like this, you wanna make sure to give the overhang a little bit more space than you would because if it does rain heavily, the water is gonna fall in front of the beehives here. So bees won't be able to get in and out as easily. So if you give them extra space, they'll be able to get in from the sides a little easier. So the original bee house calls for a plastic roof, which is usually gonna last a little bit longer and probably is a little bit more waterproof and water resistant. But again, I'm using whatever I have here. So you can use a wooden roof or plastic if you have it, but you wanna make sure either way that the bees are protected from the elements. So the mason bee houses themselves, where the bees will be laying their eggs, are come in all different kinds of uh, varieties. So here I have drilled a bunch of holes inside of a cedar piece of wood. Now, cedar is probably one of the best woods to use um, because it's more or less water resistant, mold resistant, it's gonna keep the bees healthier for longer. Now. Usually, the ones that we have at Jackson Bottom are reusable and they're able to be taken out and cleaned and washed after every use. So a block like this, you may want to use only for about one year and then toss it out. That way you're not risking infection or spread of disease. Now the actual holes that they're gonna be laying their eggs in can come in all different varieties. So the bee houses that we have at Jackson Bottom are actual wooden trays made out of cedar plank, like this block that I have here. 
and they have a plastic top that can be removed so the trays can be cleaned after every egg laying. So once a year, you want to either remove these and toss these out, or you can make a box full of other ones that can be cleaned really easily. So there's all different types of things you can use, but you want to make sure that the hole is not too big or not too small.